welcome to java expert in today's video we'll discuss about text license spring boot configuration so normally so whenever we are building the uh, spring boot application right uh, spring boot related configurations will be configured in the application.properties or application.yaml file right so these files will be available in the resource folder which will be packaged as part of our jar file right so what will happen is so whenever we go for any small changes which we have to make it in the configuration file we will end up in rebuilding the entire component again right because these files are available inside the our component basically inside our jar file right so what will happen is in this cases we made a very small configuration change but we end up in building the entire package again which will need to retest the package again right so as a developer we can claim that we are making only the small change in the property file but as you are working in a big corporate or uh, bank sectors right so your uh, uh, release process will go through the certain process and governance things which needs to be satisfied with these kind of processes like how to perform testing manually how to perform testing as this you are building the entire package again right so these things will be pain for us and it will be taking a lot of effort and time also right so those all are the things which we may think about how we can avoid this thing right now what are the advantages we are going to get when we are doing the externalizing the configuration things from our spring boot application right the first thing is you can easily modify the change without modifying or you know, rebuilding the entire code base again that's the main advantages we are going to get out of externalizing the spring boot configuration and the next one is in few cases we may be need to configure certain secrets like uh, database password or api keys those things in the configurations right so those things can be avoided to keep as part of our code repo this can be take it away from the code base and we can maintain it in this separate repo since we are keeping our configurations outside of our packages so that's the another thing and these packages can be deployed independently right that's the main thing since our code base and configurations are separated when you want to you know modify only the configuration things configuration things we are not building the entire package so only the configurations will be deployed which will need a very you know minimal effort of validation and checking things which no need to uh, retest the entire thing since we are not making the any code change or we are not making the any code deployment to the servers right and there are many ways we can do the exercise in the spring boot configurations so those few uh, things can be done by our own without depending on any other tool and there are few other things like uh, spring cloud configure hashicorp vault those are the tool which are available which, uh, which we can use it to exercise our configuration things right so so uh, we can think about certain use cases when we have to exercise this spring boot configuration right so most of the cases like we will be configuring our database things database configuration things like uh, database host name service name username those things will be configured over there in the property file as well as if you are using any integration services so integration related uh, things will be configured what is the cert we have to use it what is the cipher should we have to use it those things will be there and if you are using any messaging systems like mq kafka Tolles, those informations will see uh, you know, information also will be configured in the configurations files so these things will go for a change uh, and may not be very often but it definitely will go for a change because be it a database be it a messaging services be it integration services is very often will go for to the next versions we will keep upgrading to the next version because of older versions will out of service out of uh, sorry out of support or in the older service may have uh, vulnerabilities which we have to mitigate or we have to remedy it in the latest version so for many reasons we will be moving to the latest versions the tools which are using it those information will be configured in the property files right so in those cases you are keeping these property files outside of our application outside of our uh, jar file it will be very helpful very easy to so uh deploy it in the product right now uh, we'll see what are the uh, different way which we can uh, 
implement this externalizing the config right think boot offers in many ways i just mentioned few things which commonly used in the industry like external file system okay so external file system this is the one which i'm going to demonstrate today external file system means we no need to depend on any other third party tool or library it is very simplest method which we can implement this one like you know as the name suggests it's a we're going to place our uh, property in the file system our application is going to refer from there next one is command line argument right so command line argument means when you bring up the application you start the application arguments will be passed to the program as the command line argument system properties is also similar to that one this also given when we are starting the application the difference is command line argument means the argument whatever you are giving right that will be input to your program so if you take a spring boot application you will be starting from the main method right in main method there is a string array the uh, so, uh, string of array argument we are giving right so whatever the command line argument you are giving there right that will be the input to the main method and system properties it will be input to their vms right jvm now bring up the jvm we want to set up certain environment in the jvm we can use its system properties normally we will mention like iphone d and the property name equal to value kind of a key pair value by mentioning iphone d that's a system property and configuration server which means spring cloud configuration servers we have and we made a video about this one i mentioned the link in the description box you can refer and uh, try yourself right where like uh, spring uh, cloud configuration means properties will be maintained in a separate repo your spring configuration server will pick those uh, configurations from the repo and your services your actual services will load these uh, configurations from the config server so that's how it will work you can refer the or uh, video you can understand in better way and ashikarp vault this is also an, another uh, tool which you can integrate with that we can configure our properties over there and we can use from our program uh, most of the cases ashikarp vault will be used to configure our secrets kind of if you want a password of database password of our next message password of your service account those things can be vaulted in the ashikarp right those all are the accounts who's having the high privileged account which needs to be vaulted and managed in a secure way we have to go for a hashicorp vault so those are the use cases for that vault right so in today's video we going to external file system uh, using external file system we can externalize the configuration right so this is the thing which you going to demonstrate in the today's video okay, let's go for a practical session let's create uh, simple, uh, project, a simple project i'll put txtn configuration we need only spring web dependency nothing else is required for this we just wait for a few seconds to our project is getting created okay so our project is ready now what we can do is we'll go and quickly create one controller first we'll see how we can get the property that i'll show you then we'll externalize it okay we don't take much time it will very quick create down controller right so as we already know how to create the rest control all those things if you have any uh, a doubt how to create the project how to create the rest control how to just you can refer our previous videos made a video about this one so you can refer that in understand in better how these things are works right we'll make book string it config we'll make a quick method it mapping of uh, it config simple things we are making it now as we already mentioned we will be having all our configurations in the resources application dot properties right this will be automatically created by the spring boot application spring boot uh, initializer tool when you are creating the application if it is not available you can create it that is also fine not an issue so now automatically this one properties is coming by default that is spring dot application dot name 
EXT in configuration. This is the configurations which we have given while we are creating the project. Now config control. So we so now we have to get the property from the application and properties uh, to this config controller class. How we can get it? We need an environment object for that. Environment. This is you know we can simply do auto wire, right? So Spring Boot create the object for us. We can use it in our uh, any of our classes using the auto wire. Simple. Now to simply return this get property of will give the property name. Uh, now what we are doing is we simply get in the one property and we are returning it right we are not yet externalized a, a property file this is still inside our project inside our uh, component right i will quickly run and I'll show you are we getting this expected result now then we will do the actual things i am starting the application we didn't make we didn't mention any port anything else so it will start by default 8080 it got started successfully I'll go to postman mention the get config right so this is the end point right local host 8080 get config then okay so we are getting the response right i'll send one more time right ext in configuration response we are getting it right so uh, you can see in the property this is the value okay fine so without explanation it is working properly now we will get into the actual thing let me stop right now what we want to do is we have to copy this property outside of our uh, uh, project and place it somewhere in our file system. It is placed inside the uh, e colon YouTube. This is the folder I am placing it right. Now I will go and delete this file from here. Now from the project we have deleted the file we place somewhere outside of our project in some file system location. Now we will run it again without a uh, property file. How it works? You see that one quickly. Start it again. We will go run the postman. We are not getting it anything because there is no such property available in our uh, context. So we are not getting anything. Right? So why I am showing is we have deleted the config from our project from our uh, component. Now we have to refer the uh, property file which are placed in e colon youtube right you have to refer it in our code so that that will be loaded when we are starting the application for that we have a certain annotation for that property source that's annotation we have to give the value for that since we are using the uh, file system file colon colon slash YouTube slash that exact path we can give it. That's it. Very simple. Colon YouTube application properties. That's it, guys. Now this property will be loaded from the uh, uh -huh. file system. Let's start it again. Get started. Go to Postman. Run the same thing. We are getting the response. That's easy. It is you no know, simply we keep it somewhere outside in the file system. Put the path here in the property source annotation. It works. Now I'll just explain one more thing here. Suppose there are few cases we may have multiple properties which have to which has to be loaded. Okay, we may have a, a property that some certain common properties and certain specific to certain component properties we may have it right. Uh, like we may have a ten set different services. Out of ten, eight services may use the same database. And two services may use a different databases, right? So what we can do is we can create a common uh, property which allow the common database thing. And there are only two two system two components using the different database, right? For that we can get a one more property which allow that specific common related things, right? Property names can be same, but the values will be differ. So in the order which in which order we are loading those property in configuring that that's matters, right? For example. Uh, we have application properties. I'm getting one more property here. I'm changing the name to uh, application hyphen. Like means specific property, right? What I'm doing is uh, 
will change only the value the property names will be remain same i am changing the value to specific external configuration specific right i'm coming to the property uh, code now we have to include that as well one more thing also application hyphen spec like right we are loading both the properties here but when you have, when you want to load the multiple properties there's a one another annotation which you have to use it property source there's a one more annotation called property sources this is property source and you have to use a property sources inside you know these two property source needs to be comes inside the property sources it has to be it has to be mentioned something like this by mentioning comma right property sources will have n number of property source now in this case property sources is having two property source that is one for application that properties and another one is application spec dot properties both the properties having the same key but different values okay our expectation is <coughs> this component should pick up the latest thing the uh, application spec dot property whatever is mentioned here it needs to be picked now let's start and see that started post to postman run it quickly yes what you are getting is external configuration specific right since we have our two properties both the properties having the same key but values are different but in which order we are loading is first we are loading application properties then we are loading application specified properties both the properties are having the same value the so whatever the properties comes at last will be in effect in our program okay so that's it guys that's it uh, that's easy it is i hope you guys understand this one i shown you the very basic thing of how we can externalize these properties you can play around it you can explore on many other ways which i have shown you in the slides like hashicorp or sync cloud config which we made a video you can refer it and those things you can uh, explore guys so if you had any other thoughts and comments put it in the comment section and share this video with your techy friends and like the video and subscribe it thanks for watching and i'll see you in some other video soon thank you guys